six. He missed. All right, all yours. Great. Uh, we're here to start the Topsom Community Center Committee meeting uh, on October 16th. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, we probably should start with some introductions. We've got to get caught yeah. up and <laughs> uh, everybody to be on the same page. This is good timing for Allison. So I am Leslie Byrne. I'm one of the co-chairs. Uh, Steve Kessler is coming. He should be here probably within a half hour. So, And I'm Brian Robertson, I'm Vice President of Research at Market Decisions Research out of Portland, Maine. I am Allison Carey Blay. I am the newest member of the TCCC <laughs> um, and uh, learning about the committee and what our goals are. I'm Ann Callahan. I'm also a member of the Topic Community Center Committee. I serve as the secretary at this time. Mark Waltz, assistant town manager. Mark Lee, I'm with Harriman, and uh, we were uh, looking for the right consultant to bring on this important aspect of the project. So we reached out to Brian at Market uh, Decisions. So thank you. And I'm Pam LaDuke. I'm the Parks and Recreation Director. <laughs> Allie? Hi, Allie. Hi. Hi, everyone. I'm Allie Tippery, and I'm the Qualitative Research Manager at Market Decisions. Great to meet all of you. Yeah. So great. So I think we're just going to uh, go ahead to any changes to this agenda before we jump into um, any an update. So um, anything that we really needs an agenda. Oh. Why don't you? Uh, oh, there. Oh. Yeah, great. <clears throat> so any changes, we're going to go ahead and um, talk about an update and do that and then go on to our committee um, process. So sound okay? Mm -hmm. No changes to this agenda. Uh, so we'll go ahead and um, just catch everybody up to date and see where we are. Um, I don't Sounds know, Mark, do you want to? Yeah, I'll, maybe I'll just frame a little bit. Yeah. Uh, I think the last time we all met uh, with when Herman was present at the committee meeting, uh, we were uh, we reviewed some of the material uh, regarding inventorying of existing uh, spaces that are being used, but really what the uh, missing element was is focusing in on the um, mm -hmm. aspect of what the community, you know, this this question that, that is fundamental to this, which is what is the community looking for in a community center or community center functions? Uh, and how do we then begin that framework? And we, we started talking about focus groups and the engagement of the community and focus groups. And so uh, at that time, uh, Pam and I had some conversations just to understand how we could better support uh, this part of the, uh, the um, scope of the work. And uh, I did a little research and found uh, Brian at Market Decisions. And so it seemed like they could provide exactly the type of services that we needed. They had some experience with the town of Topsom in the past. Uh, and so, and they uh, have, I guess, the skills to, to say in a qualitative uh, way what, what the community is looking for. And with that, I will turn it now over to Brian, maybe just a little introduction, to Brian, to you and uh, and uh, what you folks uh, do and, uh, and bringing you on board. So. Hello, thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Brian Robson. I'm here with Allie. Uh, we work for Marketing and Research. We're a full service uh, research firm. We do both quantitative and qualitative research. I do a lot of number crunching. Allie actually just sits to get out and talk to people. <laughs> but as that, one of the things that we have done and amongst everything else that we do within the kind of broader of the public policy is that I often work with not just towns, but even nonprofits on topics of interest them. Uh, our company is actually was involved in like the general comprehensive planning process for a number of towns, of which of course recreation was generally a piece. We actually did work uh, when it's like the nice federal government decided to get rid of your nice little Air Force base or your nice naval air base over there. And we did some work with them to get public opinion feedback on what they should be doing with that. And I haven't worked with the you know, I haven't worked with the town of Thompson, but we just did some research with the Brunswick Thompson Land Trust yeah. on what they should be thinking about in terms of their pro their properties and, and what they should be offering folks. Of which we have a good relay. I, I'm not sure if you found that out, but Angela, their former director, we worked very closely with for a long time. Yeah. yeah. Great. And Allie, you can add to this. 
Yeah, so like I mentioned, I'm a qualitative research manager, so I really enjoy doing anything qualitative. I'm also a focus group moderator and an in-depth interviewer. Um, so I um, moderate a ton of focus groups, whether online or in person, um, same with in-depth interviews. And I also love the design piece with qualitative research. So this is where I think we'll, you know, I'll come in the most with this project is really figuring out, you know, what are the topics we want to learn from the most? What are the priorities that we want to ask? And then how do we ask these questions in a qualitative way to get you know, the most information we need from the, the actual focus groups? So creating that, that moderator's guide, the discussion guide um, is really fun. And I, and I love doing that. So I'm really looking forward to this project. And then, of course, um, you know, I love to help with other things like recruiting and analysis and reporting. But um, yeah, so yeah, very, very much looking forward to to learning more about how we can help. I just want to say, hip, hip, hooray. <laughs> I'm going to ask a question that um, I'm show ignorance, but in my mind, quantitative research is a lot of specific numbers, and it might be a survey that is scientifically accurate or something. Qualitative um, is not necessarily scientifically accurate. How does can you um, get enough? I guess good information to help make decisions from qualitative. So they they work together. Mm -hmm. Quantitative research, I guess the simplest way to say that I can provide you information at a known level of accuracy based upon the number of people I've talked to. But typically it's we have to limit what we gather. Mm -hmm. Because of course we can't keep people on the phone or online for an hour and a half asking them every question we ever want to ask them. So typically we provide good detailed information. It's a good, it's like a, maybe the best way to think about it is it's a good way to say we've come up with some ideas. Maybe we need to determine which one are going to be the best. Mm -hmm. What Allie does is like she provides you the in-depth piece, which is she goes into a lot of depth behind the questions so that she can get the nuances of what people are saying. So the way that we have structured this is that the focus groups are a part of the process to develop the survey so that we can then get the information that you need. Are you all aware of the survey that was done previously uh, summer before last? So we did a survey of a thousand um, people within the community mm -hmm. and have the results of that yes. which are available. So, um, I think yeah, Mark has I think yes, I, and I, I think I support it maybe yeah. in the yeah. piles of email that I've yeah guessed. just it, because yeah. when we brought that information to the board of selectmen it we knew it was great information but it didn't feel like it was really a, a true representation of the community and that is what we're really striving for is that we hit all of the um, cohorts of the community so that Everybody's represented. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, and and we've we've sort of outlined our uh, process to develop, and I think it's our our goal tonight to develop uh, a guide. I think, Allison, that was your your term, right? You used the, this uh, notion of a moderator's guide to yes. engage this the uh, stakeholder groups in, uh, and the purpose of that is to help inform the survey that we're intending to send out to everyone, the broad survey. And so I think that's kind of our two-step process. And again, Brian Allison, you can correct me if I'm wrong there, but that's... That is our two-step process. All right. And so, so I think what we want to do at some level tonight is dig into what are the issues or questions we want to ask the, the uh, stakeholder groups. And there are quite a varied uh, amount of potential stakeholders, mm -hmm. but I think we've, we've kind of, and I shared, I think that as well with Brian and his group, the, um, but um, there's, there's sort of, um, you know, it, it encompasses many, many nonprofits uh, and, um, and other groups in the community. Uh, everything from, I think, um, the Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts to different um, athletic uh, clubs and, and many, many others as well, uh, even mental health, uh, uh, child care providers, you name it. I think there's a mm -hmm. large mm -hmm. list of, uh, of stakeholders. And we as a committee did go through and divide up the youth, the seniors, and all the different categories, um, those with disabilities, the arts, those kinds of things is, is how we were framing that. We do have 
more, sp more specific names of people in our community to share with you. But I think probably what's the best, I, I really want to take, and we've discussed that we want to take your lead and say, where, where are we going? What, how do we do this? Um, so do you want to continue with, um, so if we're talking about focus groups first, how, how can we help you to do what you know how to do? <laughs> so, and this is like, I guess I'll just put the way that this was discussed with Mark and I was that you had particular groups of people you wanted to talk to, but you needed to know what to ask them. Right. Yes. I assume that's the still the general process by which we're operating. The only thing I might add to that is um, a smart person. <laughs> One of my bosses once used to say, you don't know what you don't know. Um, so we as laymen in the world of um, research, you know, the, I don't necessarily say we, but I'm with a committee, said here's ideas that we think would be useful to talk to. But we'd be interested in hearing if we've got the right groups or if you think there's other groups we should be talking to or who have we left out just based on your expertise and stuff. So, and again, so we're thinking about this in kind of two stages. One is who you need to talk to. So I guess we can move that. And then the next thing is what do you want to ask them? And I'll have Ali kind of go over in more detail of the process. I'll just tell you there's a big difference between qualitative research and quantitative, which is qualitative is broad. It should be open-ended. You should, you should not really constrain people. It is not, here's a list of six questions. Please answer my six questions mm -hmm. because that doesn't really tell you anything. That's where, yes, you don't know what you don't know because you didn't, you thought you asked the right questions, but maybe you didn't know. And I think we've talked about that, which is that's, you let people kind of do it on their own because that way you find out things. Mm -hmm. I can let Allie talk about that part because she's our qualitative expert. <laughs> and just if I could ask a pre a question ahead of time. So if we're talking about um, focus groups in order to determine the survey, mm -hmm. are we looking at qualitative? Yes, the focus groups first, would be the, the qualitative aspect of this. In order to get, the focus groups would be qualitative and then we get our survey. Yes. And then the quantitative, so, or how, do, how does that play together? So the qualitative, think about it, it's like, here's a blank sheet of paper. What questions are we asked people on our survey? Again, we could write a survey. I mean, I'm fairly good at this. I could probably go based upon other recreational and other needs assessments. I could probably put together a reason those questions. Doesn't necessarily mean it actually gets at what you're really trying to do here. I mean, you have a very specific goal for your specific group. And so the important thing is, let's, it's, let's not do this before the fact. Let's gather some information from the people whom this is going to impact and use that information to write the survey. Mm -hmm. And that's why you're doing these focus groups ahead of time so that you can talk to the folks again. I think you probably have an idea of in your mind, hey, this is what we're really trying to get at when we just ask questions. I think uh, we had that lovely discussion of needs versus wants, <laughs> and which is a part of it. And so the idea is let's, let's go out there and it's not going to be a quote unquote representative group of people, of course, because you, you, know, you can't talk to everything. You're not going to be able to do a focus group of a thousand people. But it's like, let's make sure we talk to important groups and get their feedback. Let's craft some general questions around the topic we're, we're thinking of and ask them. But again, don't say, here's six questions. Please answer my question exactly as I were. Let it go as a conversation. And that's what I can let Allie explain that, what the process is when you're actually doing these. Can I, I'd like, can I just add something? Yes. Um, we wanted to, in this process, make sure we don't repeat the survey the first time because that just sends the message that what you answered the first time was irrelevant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's important that we're not carving, copying our first survey. Mm -hmm. We want to go in depth more if that's making any sense. Right. Just well, to clarify. So, yeah, these are your governor. Number one, first thing is you'll eventually need to know who to talk to. Number two, what is the actual goal here? It's like that'll define the boundaries under which you're going of the questions that you're going to ask them. We're not going to do, and I presume we're not doing an entire, let's do an entire recreational needs assessment for the town of Thompson, because that's not necessarily the purpose here. It's focused, the, the focus will be on what the purpose you have set for it. And again, there was some, I think you, you talked about, the original focus was, well, what could the community center do? And maybe it's a little broader than that now. Yeah, well, I think, I think uh, that may come out of some of the conversations, both in how we want to frame the conversations for the focus groups, but also then I think probably conversations with the focus groups will help 
uh, mm -hmm. define that a little bit further. Right. So. Yeah, it's one of those things, what you don't know, you don't know. Right. So, but Ali can tell about the process about what it's like the people we select and the types of questions we ask and the framework under which we operate the qualitative aspect. And then I can speak more to the quantitative aspect after that. Yeah, this is actually um, the perfect type of project to do focus groups and then go into a survey. And exactly what we were saying earlier with, you know, it's called a guide. Um, a guide because you know we might you might get into the actual focus groups and they start talking about a few different topics you had no idea were the topics of interest again you know you don't know what you don't know um and i think you know our the part of the way we, we create this guide is we want to start really open-ended very open-ended you want to go in there and just see what comes top of mind when you bring up you know community center you know, recreational activities, what is on their mind. And, and then you can start developing the guide a little bit more in detail of going, okay, well, why are these things important to you? Why do you think this is important to have in the community? You know, what would this change in your community? And so then you really get into more detail of the why, the attitudes, the beliefs behind it. Um, instead of, you know, just them saying what they want in a survey, you really have their voice then. And you have some of this explanation of, of why they would want these certain things. And then you have the even extra great part where they're talking to each other and, and bouncing off of each other in the conversation and the different whys. And then you can, um, it, it's really beautiful to watch. So the way I usually do a guide is, um, I don't know how we wanna do it today, but you know, start just brainstorming some of the most important topics and questions we would want to learn from the participants. And again, very open-ended. And we start making that list. And then we start thinking about maybe a few like probing questions that are a little bit more detailed as we as we go on with the guide. Um, and I usually do like to start off guides with an introduction activity and an icebreaker. And then we always end a guide with um, an ending activity too, so. Yeah. How long, Allie, do you foresee a, um a group focus group taking place so is it an hour what do you normally see that happen? yeah that's that's a great question and that was going to be one of my next questions for you guys i'm not sure how many groups you want to do or if you know that yet um or how you want to again build the groups if you want people you know from all the same types of background together or if you want to mix people from different you know roles and backgrounds together but to answer your question, it's usually 90 minutes for a focus group. Um, if you go past 90 minutes, you start to lose interest. People get a little tired, but the 90 minutes gives you enough time to have an icebreaker, get people comfortable, get people talking to each other, and then get the information you need without going uh, too long. I, it might be helpful. If, right now, we have two documents that I would refer to, one of them being stakeholders in the community. And I can go through that a little bit if that's helpful, um, just to give you an idea. So we have the arts and one in within that we have eight businesses in the area. We have athletic and outdoor activities. And in that we list martial arts, Thompson Trail, Raider, Trail Riders, ATV, Mara Meeting Soccer, Six Rivers, um, Anemba, which is a mountain bike place, Kriya, um, a football group. <laughs> So um, that's how we set that. The older community, we have um, an assisted living, um, uh, three assisted living places, um, veterans, um, a individual, the library, volunteers um, of Northern, of American, Northern New England. So it's like, th that's how we've sort of gone about this. Um, for teens, we have a teen center, which is actually in Brunswick. We have Mid Coast Youth Center, um, local therapists, we thought about guidance counselors, social workers at the school, um, theater, health center, student council, um, PTOs. You know, we just don't know where to stop. <laughs> so it feels like we just for young children, we have um, homeschool. There's there's a group of people who who are together um, around homeschooling, um, daycares, um, and we have a number of day daycares listed there. Um, 
And then the library would also be supporting the younger group. And then for other, again, we have the um, school libraries, top some libraries, because we feel like librarians definitely have a connection to another angle of, of youth in our community. Um, Brunswick Tops and Land Trust, um, caterers, you know, so uh, wait, we have more. Um, businesses wanting to, uh, to potentially rent space, we have that as a, as a listed thing. Um, those with disabilities, we have one, two, three, six places um, there. We have churches, which is uh, one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine places there. So, we, we went and we have addresses, we have contact people, we have emails, you know, for everything that we could coordinate. Um, we've all um, tried to contribute to that. So that's, like I said, I, we don't know where it begins and where it ends as far as walking in and working with you all. And then um, for the question, the other document is questions for focus groups. And I'll just start with the youth because there's a lot of overlap in some of them. Um, and we listed the stakeholders within the youth. Um, if Topsom had a community center, would you attend? And if not, why? Uh, how often do you think you would come to a community center? Would you want the center to have any of the following activities? And we have A through L listed there. Um, would you volunteer to help with community service programs? Would you want to help with life skill? Would you let, want help with life skills like cooking and balancing a checkbook? What other activities or classes would be of interest to you? So that's sort of the the style that we went with, and this is Steve Kessler. You have a very low seat. Hello. <laughs> Welcome. Oh, hello. Hi. Um, so the, yeah, those are kind of, you know, and then this is multiple pages of, you know, the, taking those focus groups and trying to figure out where, how to land on that, yeah. you know, so uh, for athletic and outdoor activities, if you had a community center, would you attend weekly, monthly, periodically? Um, how would you? How much would you be willing to pay for the use of the facilities? Would you want the meeting center to have any of the following activities? What supplies or setups would be of interest to you? So we tried to kind of think specifically around the, the group and have those questions without going into much more detail. That's that's the work that we've done. Um, yeah, that's wonderful. I, I think that is such a great starting point. Um, and I think where the qualitative piece comes in is taking a lot of those questions and just turning them into, you know, not yes or no questions, more open ended questions and a guide that you could go into any one of these groups and ask the same questions, um, I think would be, you know, the easiest way to go about this, because um, it could get it could start to get really overwhelming to have 10 different guides for, you know, your 10 different places. Um, sure. that, that you're, oh, go ahead. No, sure. That sounds great. That's great guidance. Yeah, so, I think and there's the, oh, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's OK. I was going to say, so is it worth us forwarding this information for you to kind of use to develop the, the moderator book, so to speak? Absolutely. I think I think that would be great. I I just want to back up one second, because um, is your final go goal to do focus groups with every single one of these groups? That was we true. don't we yeah. don't know that. That's okay. why you know we were kind of throwing these things out there to you, but really we want to know what questions you would ask because yeah. you're the experts. Yeah, and so we are not experts in this area. We put together what we thought we could come up with, but really there are things we don't know, as Mark said, and and we really wanted this night to be where you told us more than we told you. I was kind of holding we hoping we would hold off on giving our information to see what they had to say. But I think it's important to know the work that we've done. It's not specific. Right. It's not, you know, we're, we're not set in this. I just wanted to give you a reference for what we've done and then hoping that then you could put it together for us. Yeah, and my some of my immediate thoughts that, that just came to mind, it is a lot of work and time to do a lot of focus groups with different, um, with, you know, in, that you're talking about, you know, 10 plus groups and organizing that and, and dates and time, you know, it can get really complicated. What might be interesting for this project is mixing up the groups, inviting, you know, people from athletics, people from mental health, having these people come together and talk to each other and um, have that conversation. That's an option. You don't have to go in that direction at all. Um, and then the other thing I want to mention is something to always keep in mind with qualitative, which is very different from quantitative, 
is, um, you know, with, with quantitative and surveys, you want that N pretty big. You want to be able to generalize um, your information, you know, across um, the population that, that you're trying to learn from. With qualitative, you know, you can't really generalize, right? Because you're never going to, you know, you're not going to talk to hundreds of people unless it's a, you know, a crazy project. So I always think of, you know, the N in qualitative research is the quality of, of the information that you're getting from people. So usually for any project that we do focus groups, we usually do four to six groups. We usually don't do more than that. Um, once you start going over six groups, you'll start hearing the same information, um, you know, and themes. So I don't know what you guys think about that, doing, you know, four to six groups and maybe mixing in um, different voices from the different stakeholder groups. I think a good advantage to that, Allie, is um, it may be easier to get people to participate. You know, for instance, if we had a midday group and an evening group and a Saturday group, you know, if we're not trying to get all the people, all the child care providers at a certain time or something, we probably are going to have better overall turnout. So I, I think that's a good idea. To mix yeah. Yeah, we, we've at, hi, hi, Ali. We've actually already, as a group, agreed upon uh, limiting the groups to about five anyway. So we're, we're right on board with you right there. Uh, what is the approximate number of people you would typically have in each group? So for in-person groups, usually invite around 10 to 12, hoping six to eight show up. Um, I would say my, my sweet spot for in-person groups is that eight number. If you get up to 10, that's okay. If it gets more than 10, it can get, um, you know, a little chaotic and you're not able to hear from everyone in that amount of time. Uh, so that's usually what I shoot for. If you're doing any online groups, um, the sweet spot for me is, is six people in an online group. Um, but you know, so you invite 10, the six to eight is, is a sweet spot for online. And what do you find is best for getting the data you want or the, the thought process that you want online or group in person? Uh, amazing question. It's um, people have very strong feelings about this question. <laughs> uh, honestly, if you have a good moderator, it doesn't matter. Um, that is my my overall feeling. I, in the end, prefer in-person groups just because I love being in person with people and meeting and having having that face-to-face. -face. But I will say, if you have a, a mixed option of online and in-person, it makes um, the participation you know, numbers probably a little stronger to make it a little bit more flexible for participants. Um, so either works, really. So as we begin to move forward, and I'm just trying to understand how you, you see it methodically happening, um, and I'm aware of some other similar types of projects and what it, what's occurred, we're going to have six groups. We're going to have maybe one that's online and the other five in person. You're going to provide us a moderator's guide with the questions and that part. How do we document? How do we gather? How do we hold on to everything that comes out of that? Is there someone that's a scribe for the group? Is there a, something that you provide to us in the moderator package that we kind of make or, those notes? Or is Allie the moderator? Or are, right now? Or are you the moderator for some of these, Allie? Or? No, we did. Fortunately, we, it's like this is largely consultation. Okay. So okay. again, that's, okay. that is probably yeah. stretching Allie's resources out yeah. a bit. That's what I thought. Yeah. So, yeah. I know. So, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. Um, well, she is an amazing martyr. <laughs> when she was talking about that, I said, oh, she should be good at martyr. <laughs> so, the one thing I can tell you so, you, you've identified a lot of groups. Actually, you did a lot more than that. It's like you identified the way you're going to recruit these groups. So, you just ran through a list of, we you know, this group, this group, this group, this group, this group. We got all their emails. You found the perfect way to, to recruit some people. Yeah. So you don't think of those as the groups. You're going you're, to think of those as the mechanism by your way you're going to recruit them. Two, somewhere in the, it's, I would get some general public people in here, at least extend the opportunity for them to participate. What is a general public person? Anybody. Just put an announcement out. Uh, here's the, Rather than going to the specific uh, channel. Yeah. And it, they may just be that you're getting the same people through a different mechanism. And then three, I don't know how you would balance. It's like you wouldn't want to just make sure you got, okay, we sent something out and all we got were 
65 people or 65 who want to do it. You generally, you want to make sure that you're kind of balancing, that you really are getting some broad representation. So it's a question of, it's like fitting the puzzle pieces in. And I guess you're right. If you do five groups, say here's some times, that gives you the greater capacity to actually do this. And so I think the way we've generally done it is like we kind of pre-recruit people and then invite them. Is that right? If we have something like this? Yeah, well, we usually have a screener that goes out, you know, just saying, here's an opportunity, see if you're eligible for this and if you're available. And um, th this is where they can fill out their availability, any demographics you want to know, you know, what, where are they, which, um, where are they coming from? What's their role? You could even ask, you know, are they male or female? What's their race? And then once you have that information, you can start building the groups yourself. And then you send out the the invitations to the actual group. Um, so you're saying we would take the list that we have now. Mm -hmm. We would send one general from the co-chair saying, this is what we're in the process of doing. We'd like to know if you're interested in participating. Please respond to this online form that we can create. Mm -hmm. And then we, once we get that by a certain date, give them a deadline to do everything. And I guess I, I yes, I'm a methodical person in this part. So, um, so then we would figure out when the time, who it is that we're, you know, the people that are all interested, then we'd sit down and kind of look at the connections or what would make a good mix of these people know each other. And this might help to encourage the yeah. discussion, that type of thing. And and then we would set those times up. And then you send specific invitations out to the people. Which is like, got it. Okay. Would yeah. it less? Maybe it's not as effective, do. but maybe less work. Um, we created a mix of times and dates, days of the week, and then took the hundred and people we have email addresses or whatever they're interested. Give them like a sign up genus type type thing, and let them pick the times that. Yeah, that was set their own groups as opposed to trying to us. Yeah, well, no, exactly. That's exactly what you do, right? You put a calendar and say, here are the times, which ones work for you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that exactly. That screener, you would you would put set dates already. So part of your building is seeing who's available on what date. Good. And that just, yeah, that simplifies it greatly. Because and if Monday evenings turns out more people can sign up for them, we can handle them a group than we do for two Monday nights and we drop the Sunday noon that no one signed up yeah. for. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. so that's the first stage. So again, it seems like you've already came to the list. And again, I presume there's just a channel that you can broadcast out to the general uh, general town populace. Okay. Um, sort of. <laughs> there's a newspaper that Pam puts together mm -hmm. once every month. We have a page. There you go. Uh, we're also finding a most effective way of hiring public works employees has been putting a bulletin <laughs> on the town hall. Yeah, really? <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> since Thursday. We've already had a couple people come in and get oh, applications, which we had not even two months before. Huh? Uh, right. And then we just had a banner made up. We have a special town meeting coming up on November 2nd that we're going to put out front. And the sad thing is, now that most people don't subscribe to the local newspaper anymore, I think mm -hmm. the best way to get information out is to be assigned in front of town hall. But we do have, for instance, like the recreation department has an um, email list of participants and people like that, that we could pick residents and extend an invitation. We have... You know, the groups that we have here, the library has a list serve of residents that we could certainly get, you know, invite or participate. Yes. Um, the select board has a, a group of e-lert that things go out to. So we certainly can get in contact. And the last time we did this, that was the way we did it. We yeah. mailed it um, out in the um, town crier, yeah. which is our local newspaper. And then we had a link to the site where they went in and they filled out what they want. Oh, there you go. Oh yeah, Ali, wish we had big lists like that we could recruit from. <laughs> oh yeah, that is magic. You know, recruitment can be can be a huge pain and difficult. And you guys, it seems like you guys will have no trouble at all, to be honest, which leads to my, my next, or I wanted to finish answering your question to, um, you know, how, for our groups, we do always record them. So um, that is my one of my biggest suggestions is you wanna be able to record the groups and then be able to get transcripts after, take those recordings and 
and put it through a transcript service, that will be the best way in the end to, to start analyzing you know, the feedback. Um, a moderator always has a note taker with them too. So you do, the, you, you know, the moderator cannot be taking notes the, the whole time that you want them to be present, really active in the discussion with the participants. So making sure you have a note taker with you who's able to, um, you know, take notes and be there with the moderator. And then I think my question for you guys is, um, are you offering any incentive or is it is it just volunteer for the focus groups? You might have left over Halloween candy. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Don't, don't, don't go in his office. Is all else. Well, I'm going. I'm going. Did I answer it, Alan? So, <laughs> for the I talked about any incentives. Well, I answered. So, that's does not the town true. have a transcription service? We talked about it. Do you mean that like a computer program that yeah. let's take that I mean, transcribes things, or you mean a literal like, like Otter AI? Is that like what you're talking about? We actually well, we actually AI. use transcription services when we do them. I don't oh, know okay. what your experience what the online versions are. Um, I use I have an I have an Otter AI account, and there are a few mistakes. I would say it's ninety five percent accurate. Yeah, but probably for this purpose, that's that would probably well, yeah. Do Zoom meetings, and I need transcript. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if that's what we're... I had never heard of it, so I'm okay. fascinated. <laughs> Knowing what I used to have to pay to get like <laughs> police stuff transcribed, it was a small fortune. So probably <laughs> your version nowadays. It's, 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 it's the service. It's ten dollars a month you pay for annually. Yeah, that's a lot cheaper than yeah. yeah. Shout right? <laughs> <laughs> out even cheaper. Um, we we well we actually have already talked about the incentives because that's why we we have there is some money set aside in case you decide that we should incentivize these groups? Um, it depends. I mean, you guys will know better with, with your community. You might have people who really actively want to participate and they, you know, they don't need an incentive. The incentive piece, you know, it just helps make sure people show up and that, you know, you're compensating them for, the, for their time. Um, what type of things? I mean, oh. I think what Steve's referring to is that we can provide food, we can provide you know, an atmosphere pizza, maybe one night for a group to come, that type of or thing. Or Pan makes a pie. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, well, yeah. well we, we were actually talking about including some of the local businesses and seeing if, like, 144 Main or whatever wanted to, 104, yeah. or 104 wanted to put in a, a platter of food to bring in. So tonight's focus group is sponsored by hmm, this restaurant. Okay. So, but it's, Seems in charge of that. <laughs> so. I was going to help, but I, was, I think Ali will, uh, Ali will confirm. Unfortunately, cash is king. <laughs> yeah, it is true. Um, the you know the average compensation right now for a ninety minute focus group is you know seventy five to one hundred dollars um, per participant, whether that's a gift card, cash, or check. And um, that's, a non -profit. Profit. <laughs> that's a non-profit, yeah. even with working with non-profits, oh. that's the incentive. Wow. It's yeah. Yeah, the state of yeah. that is I, the, that is, well, I have to be honest, quite frankly. That that's, ain't gonna happen. Okay. Here. I think it's the, yeah. well, okay. then the I think Steve's idea yeah. of maybe having a gift card oh, <laughs> to, I'll, to I'll give like to five that dollar group. Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You guys aren't from Maine, are you? I don't think no. you guys will have trouble at no. all, especially with this type no. of project. Um, I think yeah. people will be happy to participate. Well, again, you're the pitch you're making is we're doing something for the town. Do you want to have a say in it? Yeah. I mean, exactly. to put it politely. So I don't think yeah. yes. In this particular case, it'd be nice, yeah, if you put some food out and take a couple of pieces. Yeah. I well, don't think you need to pay get, $75. You can even get some gift cards yeah. donated and, mm -hmm. you know, draw a name at the end of the session yeah. or something like that. Yeah. People I think sell. the people who show up are going to be there for altruistic reasons. Right. Yes. Get gift cards. I think I you're right. So, and no point expressing, you okay. know, making the local businesses that keep getting yeah. for donations. Yeah. That to do Throw this. a couple of pizzas on the table yeah. right? or some yeah. sandwiches, and that's fine. Yeah. Again, that's... <laughs> the Here, Allie, here's your pizza. <laughs> 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 but, I might feel for some pizza right now. So. <laughs> yeah. send you a pizza emoji. This five o'clock meeting time just doesn't work. There you go. What time is it there? Two. <laughs> it's it's two forty. I know. I'm in. Um, I'm in. I feel always like I'm in both time zones. So <laughs> it's funny. But um, 
the one I, someone mentioned this, I forget who, just just throwing it out there. Um, I usually get more out of focus groups when they don't all know each other in the focus group. Mm -hmm. So I would say, um, you know, it can be intimidating if there's like three people who really know each other well, and then a couple of people from from different and, then, you know, they can like maybe, you know, take over the conversation a little bit. So and it gets really interesting if there's more people that don't don't know each other at all or don't know each other very well. So just throwing that out there when you're building the groups. Do you recommend not having three people from the same neighborhood on the committee? <laughs> there you go. We digress. <laughs> so then we have the transcribed informa uh, stuff, information from the meetings. So then what? Uh, can I ask one other question yeah. before we dive into that? Yeah. What is the general timeline, I guess? What would your recommendation be as far as we should have questions or a moderator guide ready in a certain amount of time and then have how long to do the focus groups and you know what what is kind of the general time frame that you would follow in a situation like this uh, when, when do you want to do the groups i think ali would say what two weeks it's like if you want to give yourself lots of time two weeks to develop everything yeah i would say for guide um usually takes one to two weeks recruitment um, you guys have an easier recruitment and it will work better for recruitment if you recruit closer to the group so people don't forget, but you don't want to do it too close to the group. So around, you know, two weeks of recruitment having and then having the groups. So I'd say, yeah, about two to four weeks for that process. Yeah. So the way to think about it is work your way backwards. The groups are here, which means I have to have Recruiting started here, which means I have to have the guide by here. Okay. So, Thank you. And again, I don't know what your perspective on groups are, but I always kind of learn Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought I had a rule of thumb with this, but it really depends on the population at this point. Um, I guess Saturday I, might work in some groups. Yeah, I would do when you're putting when you're choosing the dates in that screener or however you do it is to just have options. Like I forget if um who's if Mark or Steve said it, have evening option, have an afternoon option, have a weekend option. Um, you know, just give people options. And so kind of the two do's out of this particular site. So you've already got pretty much you've already got the sample in a sense ready to go because you already got you just need to aggregate all this various email list into a list that you can send out once you have the date the, of course you got to set the dates you'll just need to write a real brief paragraph for for recruiting hi we're members of the Thompson community center planning commission we are doing this to give them a purpose we are looking for your input mm -hmm. if you're interested click on this link and take them to a survey, ask them whatever questions you want to ask them, ask them to fill in the dates, gather that information, take that list, get an idea when wouldn't work, what times work, what times don't work, go through and say, hey, let's make sure we got a good mix, and then send out invitations to those people that you want to invite. To each specific group. <laughs> You can say congratulations. It's like, yo, you're you're signed up for the Tuesday at 5 30 p.m. group. If you're still interested in attending, please let us know. You think does that cover the basic sampling and recruiting process, Allie? Yeah, and I was trying to think, do you guys have in mind um, <laughs> what you would use? Because I was thinking you could even use like Google Forms, something like that to make sure that's everything's we, in the same. Yeah, that's what we did in the past. It was all through Google Form. Yeah. yeah. If need be, we actually have a pretty slick piece of software that we do our surveys in that it gathers data and it actually puts it in a form that's fairly easy to analyze. But that's not, we're not analyzing anything at this point. Well, you have to analyze a, hey, it's like how many we want, we want to have a couple, it's like we want to have, all right, we're doing five groups, we want to have, you know, five teams or five youth, and we want to have five people that are involved in outdoor recreation, and we want to have five elderly. And so you got to think about analyzing that way, which is not really number crunching, but you're trying to figure out I need a mix of these various populations. Let's see if we can't make it all fit within the five or so groups that we have set up. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so that's going to be some of the important questions that you're going to have to ask is you're going to have to have some 
identifiers within the screening tool to say, are you involved in the arts? Because it's like, what are these? What's the, what are you? What are you involved with? You know, arts, recreation, outdoor activities, teen activities, you know, so that you can identify them groups. And you're going to help us with that. <laughs> Is that part of what we're doing? I think you've already identified the groups. You already have a list of it. It's like again, I what you're doing. Make sure Although I think if we follow Ali's advice, we're not going to try to divide them, right? We're just going to. No, what you're doing is you're identifying. You're just you're not you're not going to divide them by that group. What you're trying to do is, I want to make sure I have some teams, so I have to have something in there that tells me that this is a team. Yeah. Or a this one. is a group. in our five but groups. Do we care to get the perfect mix in every group, or no. do we just because I'm thinking we make it a lot simpler no. and we just pick five dates and times, mix them all up. We send our invites and say we're we're doing this. We want your input. Let us know where to sign up for works best for you, and then we'll let it. Maybe one group ends up being more artists and seniors. Well, that's the problem, though. What if you just end up with five groups of people that are sixty-five and older? Then, <laughs> they, but if they're the only ones that care to sign up, right? We're not going. So to the thing party. is, like you not you can't necessarily different. It's it. Ali, what do you think? It's like would it be useful for them to differentiate? I guess the the stakeholder groups. Yeah, it's, I, so I just did, I, I built some groups today and you are, the, the, usually the availability will override and help who's attending what group, no matter what. So when I downloaded, you know, everyone who took this screener for a particular focus group project, the first thing I did was separate them into which, which days could they actually attend the focus group. And then after I separate them that way, and then you look at the breakdown of the other demographics, you know, um, which, what is their role, you know, uh, what is their gender, you know, you're, and you're just making sure you have an okay mix, doesn't have to be perfect, but again, you know, maybe you want to mix it up and have like men and women in there, maybe you want to mix it up and, you know, make sure again, it's not everyone from mental health services, so I think you guys are both right. The dates are just going to help you no matter what. It will help randomize it in general. But then you're making sure with the other um, information you get from the screener that it's a little bit more evened out throughout the groups. Yeah, I mean, you're literally you're adding one question, which is I'm involved with the arts community. It's like I'm involved with outdoor recreation. You know, check all that apply. And it's not like you're envisioning a two-step process. I was trying to make it into one. But I see the reasons for the two. Right. Well, I think it. If I'm understanding it correctly, I've done something similar like this at work. And I think if you're sending out the email and you're saying click on it to join the event that works best for you, hey, you're already here. Why don't you answer a couple of the questions while you're here? Are you, you know, are you in the arts? Are you in youth basketball? Whatever. Right. Then when we get the list back, we have the email address, the dot their first preference for time. And we as a community will already know what demographic they're falling into. Mm -hmm. So we can decide what those additional questions right. are so that when we split up the list, if we have 20 people all for one thing, we could say, hey, could you do your second choice? And we split up the groups a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And again, hopefully more, hopefully I'm not everyone just saying, no, I want Saturday AM. Hopefully that they're willing to take a couple of dates. Well, it's interesting too, because it may be that <laughs> people identify with more than one function. And that's okay. Too, you right? can identify as many functions as you want to. So where do, we go, where do we go from here? So I think the next, it's like for this particular part, the two news are number one, aggregate the list that you're eventually going to email out to. Two, come up with a brief paragraph that just describes exactly what you're doing. That'll be the in the email. Three, can pull the one from before. <laughs> on that. three, set your dates because you're going to need to have those for the invitation. Mm -hmm. Or think about the particular questions. And the questions I would ask, what do you think? Alphabet, age, gender, and then interest in some sort of interest in activities that would get at the, the particular stakeholders you're, you're asking about. I don't know if you need to ask anything else, Allie. Um, no, I, I don't think so. Then just, yeah, the dates question. Yeah. Well, maybe um, locations also if we do in person. Yeah, you could do what you would do. It's like, would you prefer in person, virtual, real right. preference? Yeah. And yeah, so, yeah, you're, you're asking them to answer. Good. They're, answering, they're answering five questions. You know, they'll be done with it. And, you know, are you interested? Click here. Mm -hmm. And, Elliot, I think you said the goal is to target 10 to 12. Uh, in order to get mm -hmm. six to eight, I think, right? So you're if you're doing group. five, right? So if you're doing five, you're targeting a group of fifty to sixty people, right? Yep. Right. Perfect. I think so. 
and again, make sure that, and yeah, the number and make sure it's like, it's like we're, it's like we're determining there's, there's interest. Don't say if you sign up, you're going to go. Right. Make right. sure it's like, yes, we're, we're trying okay. to just identify people who might be interested. Dad, don't, it's like, yeah, because there'll be some people that might get upset if they don't get picked, I would rather. And then, so that, that gets you the mechanism to pick the groups. And then, all right, we figured out who we want kind of, Here's the 12 we would opt optimally take for this group. Here's the 12 we'd optimally take for that group. Send them an e email. Thank you again for agreeing to participate. It's Here's the agreement. information for the group you've been invited yeah. to. And please confirm, you know, send an email to confirm or something to that effect. And, then, and again, and then, <laughs> and then hold on to this just in case, because, you know, if I actually, Allie, I might actually get their telephone number too, kind of think of it. Yes, I was just going to say telephone number and email. Um, I always like to do tech checks is what I call them um, the day before or the morning of the groups. You know, you give them a call, you send them a reminder email that it's happening. Um, you know, people forget and they, or they get busy. So I would make sure someone's available on, on your guys's team to, to do that, to make sure um, you know they get that reminder. So, and at this stage, I, I, I presume you'd be happy to oh, to look over their invitation email and their little survey. So when she gets something, Ali will look it over and okay. add her thoughts. So that takes care of the first part. So the second part now is what do you want to ask these people? <laughs> so I will tell you, it's like what you have there is closer to a survey than it is to a focus group moderator, Scott. Okay. And Ali can... Again, so this is why Ali says it's like for this stage, and when we kind of think about designing something, it's real. Hey, what do you guys think off the top of your head? So we had a little bit of conversation about what do you need versus, or what, what would you like versus, well, what do you really need? It was an interesting kind of conversation we had about what would go on at a community center. Because if you ask, hey, we're building a community center, what do you want? Well, they're going to tell you exactly everything they want. They're going to want Olympic sized swimming pool, four bowling alleys. Probably a racetrack. And, <laughs> yes. And so, yeah. So the interesting thing is like, yeah, but you kind of want to know that though, <laughs> in a strange sort of way. So think sure. about this, you know, kind of back step. It's like, what is the, what are we trying to learn here? And again, that's where the interesting conversation is. Is it just about the community center or is this broader than that? Again, do we need to build an Olympic sized swimming right. pool someplace else? And I think <laughs> that one of the questions we had in the beginning was, are we meeting the needs of the community? <laughs> and I can tell you, I feel that we do well in the athletic venue, but are we meeting the needs in art? And are we meeting the needs for the senior citizens? Mm -hmm. Are we meeting the needs for you know those other components? I can give you an example. Um, we have pickleball courts at our local elementary school mm -hmm. and no one's allowed to use them. Mm -hmm. And we have seniors who <laughs> wanna play pickleball. Do we need to build a pickleball court for adults or can we utilize the school ones off hours? You know, that's the kind of stuff we're looking at. Like, how can we med right. mesh together what seniors may want or other people may want? And how can we use the facilities we already have yeah. without adding to cost? Mm -hmm. And we've gotten through, I mean, like the pickleball, they do it after school, not in the spring when there's tennis classes, that kind of thing. But we're getting there. But I think there's more we can collect. An example. No, yeah. no, I agree. But I think it's something we need to get yeah. more. And in. Allie, what do you think? I think what are the needs of the community? That's a pretty darn good focus group question. That is the star focus group. Recreational needs of the community? No, you could start with the question. Let's just sit down as a group. If you were to think about it, what are the needs of the community? You say something, you say something, you say something. If you want more space, well, okay, let's think specifically about arts. What are the needs of the community when it comes to arts? What are the needs of the community when it comes to our senior citizens? And what you're going to get is it's like, here's what everyone thinks is relative. It's like, here's what we think we need. It doesn't necessarily say that it has to go in the community center. It's just what you're trying to identify is the broad spectrum of what you're asking, which is, hey, I need to know what we really need for this community. Now, then we can get a little further down the line and maybe you have a little more detail about it. Do you frame it at all? I mean, other than, you know, well, uh, we, we need, you know, longer hours at the transfer station or, I mean, you, you want some guidelines about. So, but what Ellie will do is this. 
Oh, well, you never know. Sorry. It's like you have to put the transfer the transfer station the community center. Yes. Hello, Allie. Good to talk to you. What's happening? What, what I like about that question is, you know, like Arp ended up building a bandstand on a visual field. It right. could be like, yeah, we'd like to have a place to go out and have. So, Ali, what do you think? Right. It's like, again, originally, the, the, we'll eventually get down to this is going to have to do with the community center, but I don't think that's how you want to start with. What what do we need to build in a community center? It's more a question of what are the needs? I think we can go well, into our, our um, yeah. mission statement, too. Right. You yeah. know? And, and if we think about that, the right. mission of the community center uh, uh, committee is to understand the desires and needs of the Topsom community to identify accessible, affordable, sustainable recreational solutions that will serve the multi-generational community and social connection among Topsom citizens. So, so how do we make that? Yeah, we need question. to focus. Right. Right. Yeah. I don't, I'm sorry. And know. Allie, I think as you can tell, you can you can count, you, you, there's an introductory process in the focus group that, that Allie can probably explain to you, which provides the kind of the ground rules for doing it to the people. And that's just a part of the process. And when, when a moderator's guard's developed, that's what's okay. built into it. But, yeah, I mean, you, that that's the perfect place to explain the mission in general, the point of the groups, and you ease into, you know, what, what we're expecting from the conversation, and then you ease into, um, you know, a fun icebreaker where it could be like, all right, everyone gets a piece of paper, you write down one thing that you would want the most in a perfect world out of your community, right? And then everyone does it, and then everyone shares it instantly we'll start conversation of people going back and forth. Um, and then and then you start getting more tailored to, um, you know, the key topics of the guide after that. Um, I just lost my, my, my train of thought. Um, so, yeah, and the way it's like, I would do that. It's like, here is a, this is the reason why we're here today. I would still start out with a question like as broad as what are the needs of the community within that framework. And then as need be, Again, depending on what people say, if they're just saying, you know, we want a tennis court and we want some outdoor swimming pool, then what you can do is it's like ask appropriate follow-up questions to get to the information. Well, okay, well, that's some great ideas when it comes out to record. What are the needs of the community in terms of art? And you can direct them down a path that way. You know, what are, what are the needs of our senior citizens? You know, especially you senior citizens, what are your needs? So if it's like, again, this. The, the advantage of focus groups is they're fluid. The advantage of a survey is it's written in stone and it doesn't get changed. So that's the advantage of the thing. It gives you the maneuvering room to explore a topic, and you're, but you're not locked into it. Again, if they, if they go out and say, here's all the wonderful outdoor activities that we really need in this town, then you wouldn't specifically need to ask them a question about outdoor activities. So, Ali, other than that kind of broad, can you think of any other kind of broad questions that would be useful? Well, <laughs> I, I think it is, I forget who said this, but um, really digging into what would actually make them participate or go to a community center. Like what would actually get them to, to go up and, and do it and go? I think that's an important question. Um, I think in these types of groups, you can get stuck in like, at the beginning of people complaining sometimes or venting about, you know, what the community needs and to make sure we steer it in a more solution oriented at the end. Um, um, you know, because, you know, it's trying times right now. You don't want to get stuck in just like the venting of what they need. It's like, okay, you, you need this. Let's talk about the solutions. What would make you actually go and, you know, kind of steer it a little more. Um, and then what else did I see here? Yeah, how would, um, I know you guys had like, how much would you pay? I don't know how important that question is. That can get tricky in a focus group, I think. I think that came up with a question of like, somebody wants a pool that's going to be multi-million dollars. Are they willing for their property taxes to go yes. up to have this pool? Are they willing to pay for a membership? Could we sustain this pool through personal funds, through um, income, you know, yeah. renting it to the local hospital to use as a therapy pool? You know, like, how can we, how can we come up with fundings to make a pool accessible and affordable uh, and sustainable, and but so that would be in the qualitative. So, you know, or I mean, that yeah. would be in the quantitative. Oh, I think you. I mean, you so 
so it's like, yep, you know, we start out really broad. What do you, what does the community need? Da, 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 da. It's like, you know, again, I mean, one of the questions I might ask there, it's like, hey, bring up the topic of the community center. This is what we're thinking of. Hey, you just gave us some great ideas of what the community needs. What kind of activities would you want if we were to have a community? Say, what would you want there? Da, 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 da. They've already told you exactly what they want. So then you can and then, you, the and then you go into the access part of it. What's going to make you, you, you well, we make you go there? And then it, again, this is why it's fluid. If they're talking about things, well, they don't necessarily want an Olympic sized swimming pool, they don't necessarily want this. Okay, maybe we don't need to talk about funding, but if they are talking about big things like that, you can talk about funding in a broad sense. It's like, all right, so we've had some great ideas here about what you want. Now you do, it's like, you know, a part of this process is going to be understanding how we actually pay for this. Now, what are your thoughts? It's like, if you're, if we're going to do this, what do you think about this? What do you think about this? Again, it's a question of whether, again, it's like the conversation might naturally go there. If, yeah, if you're asking for community size, there will be swimming pools. It's like, you can ask questions about, it's like, well, what do you think about a middle levy as a way to fund this? What do you think about this? What do you think? And you're probably going to let people, oh, oh, no. And that's, again, why we, we had that lovely conversation about needs versus wants, which is, if you want, it's like, yes, if you want it, that's great. You do understand there's going to be a cost. And again, the survey later on the process will get a little more specific about that. They'll say, here's, because you're going to start asking about specific things that they mentioned. And you can say, if you want this, this is the, you know, what funding mechanism would you want us to use? So other than that, I think the only other thing that, I don't know if this was still an issue, was location, or is that settled? Oh, of, <laughs> of what I think. Okay. Yeah, where do you want to put this thing? Oh, oh it's not settled. <laughs> oh, no, no, we're not ready for that. I, yeah. They have no choice. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to ask that question. Yeah, but that's further down the road. Set that we even yeah. need to be that part of this might be right. that we don't need, we just need services. Or right. right, and that's one of the things, it's like, okay, I mean, you may want to insert, what do you think about this? What do you think? It's like, so what do you think, Allie? Some general question before we start saying, what do you want at the community center? Hey, this is what we're thinking about. What do you think about that? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, so what you do is a kind of, here's some things we need. Here's the description we want. Hey, what do you think about this as a general idea? Good, bad, just give us your feedback. Great, let's move on. What would you like? What would make you go there? If need be, maybe then you can delve into, well, it's going to cost a million, cost $5 million to put an Olympic size swimming pool. How do you want to pay for it? And Right there, you got a fairly decent moderator's guard to start with. I mean, you've you probably got half, you probably got an hour's worth of conversation right there. Do you recommend we use the same moderator for all five or different ones? Or if possible, I would use the same. Just um, try to keep it consistent. And then you don't have to train, you know, five different people with the guide, the moderator will hopefully just know the guide. They won't need to, you know, keep looking at it. I mean, they, it, it'll be there for reference, but to really, you know, be there in the conversation and be able to jump around. Um, mm -hmm. Cause you know, it's not gonna go chronologically every time. And then after the transcribed <laughs> notes come back, then I, I'm imagining that there's some level of analysis of going through and finding all the common points, uh, which is what will help distill the, uh, yeah. the whole aspect of a survey. Is that, that something that we just then, is, is there'll be another whole workshopping of, okay, how right. do we translate this and this what we've learned into a survey? Yeah, uh, well, and I would, it depends. Hey, what do you think of us having a community center? No, it's like, I guess you got the answer. So it's like, that's the thing. We don't, you won't know what the survey looks like until you actually get this video. Again, that's why I'm hesitant to say, well, I could probably design a lovely survey that says, hey, how interested are you in community center? How, we're, it's like, how interested if we offer these things? But if there's just no support for it, then, then it's like, it doesn't do me good to ask, what would you want in a community center when nobody wants a community center? Mm -hmm. So, and yeah, I'm just so we're taking the opinion of 60 people. Yep. And that is not the sole thing that you're going to base it upon. So there's expertise here too. Again, and the previous so, survey. Yeah. Exactly. And the previous survey. Right. So you have some material, but again, well, I'm presuming that no one's going to say no, we don't want a community center. I'm hoping. 
<laughs> if so, they would be trouble the meeting. Plan. <laughs> so, so it sounds like these focus groups may lead to broader uh, desired services than what was originally yeah. on the first survey. And assuming from the question that we that's people. fine. Yeah. I mean, yeah, right, absolutely. That's because you know, so it's like one other question I might think about ask inserting somewhere on this alley would be, oh, here's a bunch of needs. How can the town of Thompson best go about providing these needs? I might ask that before I ask that. That's a good way of maybe framing the whole aspect of, of you know, supporting it through uh, some level of, of a cost. Piece, right? Because then you can go, hey, we're thinking about a community center is one way of doing this. Yeah. What do you think about that? What activities should we potentially do there? And what should we offer elsewhere? And then, yes, by the way, how's it get around to us? We're actually going to fund this thing. And by the way, where do you want us to put it? <laughs> yeah, stay away from that. Yeah. <laughs> so, but again, that's like I said, Ali, I don't know what you think. That's that's a lot of, that's a pretty long focus group moderator guide. I have figured, given the fact I have a feeling that if you start asking people what their community needs, you're going to. Yeah, they'll, they'll have gonna, a lot to talk about and then you'll have you'll have probes depending on who's there where people will want to focus on talking about athletics for a second some people want to talk about arts for a little bit you know so it i mean this is uh i think already a great skeleton for a guide i think one thing we do we might want to define what um a community center is at the beginning too because I, I that probably people i don't know what they think about what they or or that's a question when I say community yeah, center, that's a question. I think, yeah, I, like, I what, what does that mean to you guys? Because um, it'll mean different things. Can I just ask too? Are are um, I'm gonna say it, market decisions? Are you going to write this part of that up for us? I see you taking notes. With so. your help. So what we'll do is we have Ali take me. We got some fairly decent questions, right, Ali? Oh uh, yeah. The thing that we need to know is. Up front, you'll have to describe why are we doing this focus group, and yes, you've got a, do the paragraph. and you've got that's a good paragraph there. That's not a problem. And then describe maybe in a paragraph. This is what we're thinking about. We're yeah. thinking about a community center. center. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we can provide. And then the only other piece I think that I might ask your help for, you know, what are the needs of the community? Pretty darn broad. You know, I got art, senior citizens, record. If there's specific topics that you want to potentially broach in there other well, than share the documents right. with you okay. and not necessarily that they would be here's a question answer these technical questions about do you, what do you want for arts what do you need procedures is it's more of a guide of is it something that's come up great we don't have to, it's like check it off but if it's something that's relatively important for you to get a sense then yes we can say oh you know I, you, this is great we thought we've got a lot of ideas flying around there hey let's think about something a little different what do you think about our senior citizens what do you think they need in our community and just use it as a guide, kind of as a guidepost. So what do you think, Allie? Yeah, I could. I mean, I think we have all we need to get you guys a draft uh, of that mod guide. I'd even say by the end of the week. Um, and you'll see um, the outline that I usually do is, you know, again, it'll have that introduction piece where we'll put some of, you know, your paragraphs and then how the focus group works. And then, um, we will have you know, our open-ended questions. And what Brian is talking about is underneath those, like absolutely those open-ended questions that we will ask in every group, we will have some probes just as a reminder for the moderator to be like, okay, they didn't mention any arts though. So I'm just gonna probe them and be like, okay, just what about arts though? Anyone have feelings about that to make sure that we're covering that if it doesn't come up naturally. Okay. So just to kind of go away with clear homework guidelines for everyone. Uh, <clears throat> Brian and Allie, what do you need? Do you need anything immediate from this group uh, before you put together the draft of the <clears throat> moderator guide? What do you think, Allie? If we can, I think you're, you got a grasp of the questions they want to answer, want to ask. Yeah, I do. I wouldn't mind seeing the, um, if you can somehow email me the, the questions um, I'm forgetting your name. I'm so sorry that Leslie is my Leslie <laughs> and Pam. One of us would yeah. yep. probably email the mission statement too. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. That that so would be great. That I think. Um, but I think with I'm that, sure we, we have a... did yep. we yeah. did we talk about what the committee is to like what we're doing? Have we talked about that at all? Like how the process is of getting it. I think we center? have to get there after we get this. Okay. 
or I think maybe, maybe what you missed is they're more of consultants. So I, we would be the moderator and would be inviting the people. And that's 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 fine. But um, I, the process of how to get an actual community center does every does, is that all out on the table? Like why we're here as a committee? I think that's step two. We're really on step yeah. one needs assessment. Okay. Well, yeah. I mean, I guess the how to get it would be if the needs assessment said there was. I mean, the need then to take it back to the select board. What can right. We well, what I'm sort of getting at is not to try to, with our questions, kind of lean them towards we want a community center. We really want their actual feedback. Like, do they really want one on their own terms? Right. Like, we don't want to nudge them in, a, yeah. in right. any direction. We sort of think. <laughs> Um, we sort of want right. them to understand that we're even killed. We're here to decide whether we need one or we don't we need one, not that we're all gung-ho for a community center. Yeah. Well, Secondly, is my understanding that we would take um, the questions and then do the, uh, the focus groups and all that, and then we combine all that data and then put that towards a survey? Yes, correct. Oh, perfect. Yeah. And we're so, and then do we meet again? Yes, we'll, we'll work. So think... So what you're doing, you're starting out, you're asking a bunch of questions that have nothing to do with the community center. Right. Then the first question yeah. you ask about a community center is what do you think about this? Right. And then the next questions are, let's talk about what's going to get you there, what we should offer there. Awesome. So, so that the, 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 there should be, a, I guess, a, a lack of a bias, um, yeah. maybe is the right terminology, not necessarily bias, but a lack of bias towards a new uh, community center. Yeah. It's more right. about, let's understand what the right. needs are. And you're looking at this, hey, this is one possible way we could do it. Yep. What do you think about building a community center? Then da, 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 da. the only bias that may have, which I don't know how we can get around, it, is that this is the community center community. And, well, <laughs> and, and we're inviting people, yeah. we're inviting people to come give input to it. Uh -huh. So the probably the people who be self-selective to some extent, they're gonna want to spend oh. the hour and a half maybe once. Right. Then again, then like I said when you craft invitations, say it has to come to the committee, but say the purpose of this is to better understand the needs of our community mm -hmm. and you just don't right. bother to mention mm -hmm. community yeah. center or anything but like. i do like being prepared to bring up items that maybe were not discussed yeah. like the arts etc yeah. elderly things yeah. like that to be prepared for that yep. so our next meeting is scheduled for november 6th it's a monday um at 6 15 is actually the time that meeting is going to take place will we have that guideline by then oh, I think Allie could probably have you. It's like, Allie, you said you could have by the end of the week. Is that right? Yeah, but that we have all today. our input in it yet. <laughs> well, it's going to yeah, have. That, that was my next question. Um, I've had some good experience lately just sharing a draft of a guide through SharePoint. So everyone has access to the same document and everyone can, you know, comment on it. So you guys aren't, you know, sending back Word documents and such. So if that works for everyone, then everyone can work on that simultaneously. And then I can also see your guys' feedback. It would also be helpful, Allie, if you could just in that booklet put the TCCC will put a paragraph talking about this, and then we'll know where to plug it in and what you're expecting from us. There you go. And you use SharePoint, and I just want to make sure that committee members have access to SharePoint and can do that. I don't uh, currently have access to Oh, it. actually, that... shall, Allie, I think we can just set them up on our SharePoint site, right? We can just send them the links. Yeah, yeah, it'll it'll just open up for you. Yeah, I just wanted to be sure that people yeah. know how it works. So and, all and need... if it doesn't work, I'll, I have no problem emailing it in the end. So, right. so I guess I'll argue your homework is we need a list of everyone's emails. Because well, we'll listen, that can invite, we've got yeah. most of them, but we can get the rest of them. Yeah, yes. because what we'll do is it's like we set up a site and it's by email yeah. invitation and then you just click on a link in your yeah, Great, that works. Thanks. Well. Okay. And just to be that corny qualitative person for a second, what's nice is that you won't only have this for the surveys, you'll have, you know, the community's voice in these transcripts, you know, for a very long time and you can always, you know, go back to it. And, um, and then, you know, it always makes them feel really um, you know, like participatory research, like they are a part of the community and, you know, you're taking their feedback. So just throwing that out there, why I love qualitative. Wow. Good, good point. Yeah. yeah. And like I said, okay. one of the best things that you can do is when you do, it's like, yeah, I imagine this is going to have to be put in some sort of report or presentation yeah. and give it to Selectman. You pull out the really pithy quotes and throw them mm -hmm. in there. So, you know, you go, it's like, and here's what everyone says. 20% said they want this, 18% of them. Here's a quote from this person that yeah. just says exactly what they need to say. Yeah, that's what our previous, how our previous survey was presented. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, <clears throat> I'm running for slackness. <laughs> yes, we need to hurry up and get that done. <laughs> I'll tell you which quotes she <laughs> 
All right, sounds good. So, so the next meeting you said was November sixth. November sixth at, at six fifteen Eastern time. Sure. At, at that time, uh, I mean, uh, how many weeks ahead? That's like three weeks from now. Two. Uh, just over two. Just over two. Just just over two. Right? Okay. All right. So that's that's actually not a bad time then to start setting up. Uh, I think you call it the recruitment phase, right? Which is you know getting mm -hmm. the email organized. Uh, getting the 50 to 60 names and getting really ready to, to sort of drop that and get it, get that moved to the next level and get the survey set up. Yeah. So I think that that meeting would be really about organizing that recruitment. And then, then it's sort of when you push the button uh, and then you said it was like two weeks to get that. So, and I'll so, tell you, you're running into a challenge. I was going to say, so here comes the holiday. Yeah. Question. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's like, between New oh, yeah, Year's yeah. or Thanksgiving and Christmas, yeah. good luck doing anything right. with anybody. Exactly. It's like, they, yeah, they're yeah, not there. We, we should be but shooting. We can for still be working. <laughs> right. First beginning part of beginning January. Of January yeah. for the so, yes, yeah, so it's like, yeah, it's like, unless you could get it out, it's like right at early January. Otherwise, yeah, I mean, who's going to cut? It's like, oh, I mean, well, if you're offering them $75, <laughs> then you can motivate. You need Christmas shopping. But again, yeah, it's turkey. They're they're busy enough doing other things that mm -hmm. they're yes. probably not going to be as interested, and so but that will actually uh, influence the timing of your invitation emails. You don't want to send them out in November, right? Yeah. Right. Or December, correct? Right. right. Yeah. You want a little Christmas parties, right? Absolutely. It feels like growing up. So, so but yeah, that would be a good January second or January third. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're going to send them the email addresses. Yeah, I have a list here. Of I'll put on as an I'm answer. sending them the email list of the committee members, the focus group questions that we have okay. right now, and mission. any and the mission statement. Okay. I mean, it seems like we could maybe do the recruitment part of this. Yes. And have the meetings at the early January. Right. Yeah. Questions yeah. yeah. are they going to remember? Because people don't take three weeks off. And well, the question is, like I said, it's like, oh, yeah, I, I think I agreed to do something. It's like, but that was back in December. I can't remember. Thank well, you. In, in December, people that aren't busy say they're busy. So it's like yeah. a, just the fact that everybody is extra. Is that <laughs> if we use six weeks, say, well, unbelievable. Yeah. we start recruiting in November and do it through oh, I'm, December, yeah, I'm more of then we could, I think, be ready to rather than starting recruiting in January. Yeah, right. the, February, exactly. the risk there you go is like that someone says, yeah, sure, I'll do it. And then, wait a second. Yeah, yeah I can make all sorts of promises what I may be doing on January 12th. <laughs> yeah, it's like in November. We get time to plug them in December. There you go. And so if, if the yeah. focus groups are happening in January, then we start to get back together uh, in February and workshop the survey right. itself. Yeah. And then in March, we have a presidential yeah. plenary. Huh? So it might be another good way to get input is when people come to vote. Come Aren't to you vote. Uh, do the survey uh, at the primary? Yeah. Among other places. I mean, we can right. raise all our sources, right. but right. that's a good way to get the people that aren't people that vote in person oftentimes aren't the that in yeah. one setting. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Good. Great. Okay. Perfect. Thank plan. you. Thank you, Ali, for joining us. And and I think you <laughs> tried to find pizza next. Is that <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they, it was a pleasure to meet you. I mean, everyone. I, I wish I was I was there in person. I wish I could moderate the actual groups. They sound like a lot of fun. So, and Allie, I'll be in touch tomorrow morning with each of the lists for you. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, and then I'll be in touch. You know, on Friday with with a draft of the guide. I wondered if we could take um, not tonight, but take a moment at some point in the future when you're working with us to just do a uh, sort of a role play of what it, what it would look like with our team being the the group and just to kind of see how you how you manage it so it would give us a guide. Yeah, just a thought. And I think I also want to, and you can tell me if I'm wrong, but I do better knowing and then what. I still feel like I'm at the, and then what? So we have the transcribed right. um, focus groups. And Brian takes that and he creates the survey, the statistics. So, and now you have the transcripts. That has to be, you have to compile that into what in essence is going to be a short report. Yeah. Because I'm quite certain. If nothing else, it's like, you know, it's maybe some sort of interim report goes to the select person. I want to know what the heck's going on. <laughs> That just says, here's what it is. Here's the feedback. It's like it, you, what you do is you summarize what came out of the groups because you're not going to build a survey reading through 800 pages of transcripts. 
Right. What you do is you have someone read through, okay, okay, here's the question on this thing. Let's grab all that and summarize it. Let's grab all this and summarize it. If you find a pithy quote, set that aside because it might be used later. Because, I mean, you have, in essence, all right, what are the needs? Let's, let's see what people listed as the needs. It's like, what are their thoughts about the uh, community center? Well, there's these concerns about that. Maybe we got to craft some questions around their concerns. Right. So it's like, what would make you go to a community center? It's like, so you you come up and it's like, they're going to say, yeah, it's like, I think you need a swimming pool and a bowling alley and this and this and this. And what will make me go there if you put a swimming pool and a bowling alley and, you know, have lots of free parking. And so, and that's just, again, that's one piece. I mean, and, and then it's I, like you have the survey plus you have the committee that are going to go through and say, all right, we have the feedback. We got the general way of what people are telling us. Now we need to quantify that, but we need to quantify in a sense that, you know, they're not designing a community center. We are just like, in essence, designing a community center. So we need to ask the appropriate questions. Some of which are going to be the fun questions like, well, how are we going to pay for this? Now, are you willing? It's like, again, are you, it's like, if we do this, it's like, are you willing to pay for this? So, yeah. And, and then that survey goes out to the broader pot, the entire the broader population. population. And that's what we're talking about soliciting that yes, to everyone like that. and okay. anyone and like mark was saying at at the primary or at the uh and then we get those results back and that probably goes into the final report that the selectmen are going to see it's like this is what it who is does that final report? Report? Oh, that was a good question <laughs> who put pulls all that together well so will we have students what? at that point again yeah. well, like, part of our service is to help pull the report together so, and so um, i have already told i'm happy to volunteer sometimes so yeah. okay one of the on. one of the things we have to consider too, when Allie said, you know, a, a ninety minutes really good. At ninety minutes, we're looking for five to six groups. We're looking at one hundred and sixty to one hundred and ninety-two pages of transcripts. Yes, that's what I'm that's saying. A, that's so a lot of. But we've also got video. You know, sometimes um, it's easier to watch the video. I think it was the transcript. Except but, the transcript the, program. That's where you get the, the quotes words. and everything from the right. transcripts. You could make errors if you just. The quotes have to get out of the video. You know, so if we know there's a pithy comment at minute right. 12, we'll go back to that video and get the verbatim quote out of the video. Yeah. And, and I guess the question is if. Will we start to see a lot of overlap uh, from these? That that's the whole idea. Uh, it, yeah. it, it might be good if you have a lot of overlap. Right. Um, Stop. That'll start okay. to suggest so what that really are yeah. concrete. So what you're saying, I mean, it's like they're broad questions. There are questions you can say, I've asked this question here, I asked this question here. Let's take all five groups and aggregate the responses of that question across all five groups yeah. and see what we see in terms of themes. Absolutely. <laughs> Once that time comes to, uh, we call that report like the top line report after focus groups. I'm happy to you know show an example of how I do it and how I go through my process. And it's just an yeah an easy way to just go through each transcript, get your your top line findings and key findings with with some quotes that support all those key findings. Right. You're not. It's like you're not. You know. It's like yeah. Your transcriptions are. Great source of information, but your report's not going to be 192 pages long. Your report's going to be a lot shorter, than that. especially a top line report. Alley or what? A couple, you know, what? A couple pages. We just do the top lines. Yeah, I th I'd say about you know four to six pages. Because you're not trying to capture every subtle little detail. What you're trying to catch are the themes. When yeah, and the reason why they're that long is just because you have example quotes. Yeah. When you start to write the police reports, I'd go through and what I, I do, I, I get the confession at whatever minute. <laughs> so then I go in and that one, relist the tape and make, get it verbatim. But the other stuff was a flavor of what the right. conversation was. Okay. Great. Looks like we have a plan. I think we do. So good. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for coming, yeah. Brian. Thank, thank you, Allie, for you. coming thank online. You yeah. Thank you. Have a great rest thank of your you. night. Thanks. 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 Right. Thanks. Okay. All right. I'll yeah. email her. We can go from there. Perfect. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you very, very much. Yeah. Thank, Thank you much. You. <laughs> and I think the name tag. Oh, you want there? Yeah. <laughs> hey, well, you got the exciting business. Yeah. <laughs> talk about you. <laughs> <laughs> so we All right. We'll look forward to seeing everyone in a couple weeks. Okay. Thank you. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, All right. Uh, and Mark, we did set the first.